Welcome back everybody, I'm Ashton and this is Desktop Inventions. Now today we're going to be discussing a hotly debated topic within the 3D printing community and that is upgrading your stock 3D printer to use Noctua fans to make it quieter. And you'll see this debated because while these fans make your 3D printer more quiet, there's some debate that it actually makes the performance worse. Your printer will run hotter and you'll get nozzle jams or clogs or decrease the print quality. So today we're going to take some Noctua fans and we're going to take some stock fans and we're going to run some tests on both of them and actually do some real temperature measurements and see what the data says. So if this is interesting to you, stick around, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel to help out, and let's get into the testing. And before we start with the testing, let's go through the assumptions. We have an Ender 3 V2 here. We'll be printing with PLA at 200 degrees Celsius and a 60 degree bed temperature. We have the stock heat sink and nozzle inside of here, but on the outside we have upgraded Noctua fans. On the two ends here we have part cooling fans that are 40 by 20 Noctua fans. And the middle here, the one we'll be focusing on, is a 40 by 20 Noctua fan cool the hot end and we'll be doing some testing with the stock fan from Creality which is a 40 by 10 fan a little bit smaller there and now for the test setup we'll have to remove the fan off of the front now we can see the hot end here and we're going to take these K type thermal couples and we're going to place them on various locations across the hot end and to attach the thermocouples, I ended up using some super glue across the various locations. Sometimes I used a fan to help speed up the curing process there. After getting all the thermocouples hooked up, let's take a look at where they ended up. So I have one on the nozzle at the bottom, one on the aluminum heat block, one at the heat break between the heat block and the heat sink, and then three different thermocouples on the bottom, middle, and top of the heat sink. So with all of those attached now, we're going to reassemble the fan and run some test prints and collect some data. And to further illustrate this point, I've created a cross-sectional model of a typical 3D printing head and all the various components there. And real quick, here's all the components labeled, and we plan to measure the nozzle, heat block, heat break, bottom of the heat sink, middle of the heat sink, and top of the heat sink. And a typical 3D printer head can be broken up into a hot end and a cold end. So the job of the hot end is to heat up the filament and extrude it out at an even temperature. And the job of the cold end is to not let the heat from the hot end seep into parts that we don't want to be damaged. Specifically, we really care about the point where the Bowden tube meets the heat break. We don't want that area to get hot or it can damage your Bowden tube or melt the heat. Or if your filament gets hot and melted in this area, it can seep out and cause a jam. We really don't want this. All right, here's round one with an Octua fan, all the thermal couples hooked up. So we are going to start the print. Well, that's heating up. Let's watch things over here. Here we can see the nozzle and the heat block temperature rising pretty rapidly there as the printer heats up. And then it starts to slow down, which is the point where the super glue is starting to melt. And then the thermocouples became detached. The super glue wasn't able to handle temperatures much higher than 100 C. And here you can see the thermocouple became detached from the nozzle. I tried reapplying it again with more super glue that also failed. Then I tried to use some aluminum tape to tape the thermocouple on the nozzle, but that also couldn't hold up to the high temperatures. And I tried wrapping the thermocouple with some steel wire, but that did not give accurate readings. So from this point on, we revised the testing strategy to just test these four locations. Okay, so let's take a look at the data from the print with the stock fan. So we can see here this whole print is about 45 minutes long, as you can see on the bottom axis there. Then the four lines represent the temperature of the four components we measured, with the heat break being that blue line on the top is the hottest, and then the three locations on the heat sink are below that. 
Now one thing I noticed is at about 12 minutes there's a temperature increase there and that's when the part cooling fans kick on and I suspect when those kick on it interrupts the airflow a little bit of the heatsink cooling fan so that's why we see the temperatures rise there. Also I noticed that about 30 minutes in is where we reached the highest temperature and it was pretty much steady state from there. Now we can see the heat break is the hottest component and of most concern for us, so let's take a look at that specifically by itself. So here is just the data from the heat break on the stock fan, and in a second I'm going to throw up the data from the Noctua fan for the heat break. But first, before I do that, what do you, the audience, think? Do you think the Noctua fan will run cooler than this, or hotter, or about the same? What are your thoughts? Turns out the temperatures from the Noctua fan were actually quite a bit lower about five degrees on average. I was a bit skeptical of this data myself. Could it really be this much cooler? So I decided to redo the test three times for each fan and to prevent the possibility of a thermocouple loosening over time, I alternated the test between the stock fan and the Noctua fan, back to the stock and so forth. And here's all the data from those tests. The green shaded lines being the stock fan and the orange and brown shaded lines being the Noctua fan. So there is pretty clearly a distinct difference between the two. And to clean up the messiness of this chart, I took and averaged all three tests and plotted those two lines by themselves. And with those plotted out next to each other, we can see again the Noctua fan is about 5 degrees or more on average cooler than the stock fan. Okay, so the Noctua fan is running cooler, but does it matter? What is the threshold? And my best answer for this is PLA tends to get soft at 60 degrees Celsius, so we should at least keep everything below that 60 degrees Celsius mark. So here we can see both lines are well below the 60 degree mark, and also this temperature was taken at the middle of the heat break. The top of the heat break, where the Bowden tube is, should be even cooler than the temperatures that are shown in this graph. So from the data I'm seeing here, I think either fan would work just fine. Now let's take a look at the data for the bottom of the heat sink. We can see these values are much lower than even the heat break, so these are nowhere close to our 60 C limit. These six tests are pretty messy to look at, so let's look at the average. Again, we can see the Noctua fan has a slight advantage, just a little bit cooler, but overall the values are really close. Now let's look at the middle of the heat sink. Again, the stock fan being in green, Noctua in brown. Really messy again, so let's take the average of those. Similar results here, Noctua fan maybe being slightly cooler, but only one or two degrees. And finally, let's look at the values for the top of the heat sink. So these are the coolest values overall. Again, we see a lot of overlap here, so let's look at the averages. Again, we can see pretty consistently the Noctua fan runs just a little bit cooler, but overall not too much difference, one or two degrees on the heatsink. So even though in all of our printing and testing we found none of the temperatures even got close to the point where PLA gets soft, I did find one scenario where this is a concern. Actually, if you turn off your 3D printer while it's heated up without giving it a chance to cool down, we can see the temperatures spike pretty drastically, and we're seeing that the heat break temperature is reaching almost 100 degrees Celsius. And this spike is going to happen regardless of which fan you're using. So if there's ever a point where your cold end is going to get heated up and cause damage or cause a jam, I think this would be it. So, so I would suggest whenever your printer is hot, you go through the proper cool down sequence, or if you do have an emergency shutdown, you can turn your power on immediately after which will cause your hot end fan to turn back on and give you a chance to avoid having this big spike. So in summary, I would say feel free to upgrade to a 40 by 20 Noctua fan without any worries about overheating. Second, I have a bunch of beer openers now because I did all the printing tests with them. And third, make sure to always cool down your printer properly or you might risk overheating your cold end. So I hope everybody found this video helpful. If you want me to do more in-depth videos like this, leave a comment down below and let me know. And until then, we'll see you next time on Desktop Inventions.